Hello friends, in this lecture we shall discuss financial ratio analysis. This is the information provided to us. So we have a balance sheet of a business organization where information has been given in a jumbled form. So assets and liabilities are given but these are given in a jumbled format without any classification. So these are liabilities, these are assets, here we are given the information about the sales and here we are given information about net profits. What we are supposed to calculate? We are supposed to calculate these 12 ratios, current ratio, quick ratio, debt equity ratio, total outside liability ratio, stock turnover or inventory turnover ratio, debtors turnover ratio, debtors collection period, debtors velocity ratio, net profit to sales ratio, return on equity ratio, return on investment ratio and debt to service coverage ratio and this ratio is to be calculated assuming that depreciation is 30, term loan interest is 30, term loan installment is 70. So this is given information. Now how to make use of this information? So first of all we will classify this given information. We will classify the assets and liabilities according to their nature. So a liability can be long term liability or a current liability or it can be in the form of net worth. So first of all we will mark the exact nature of that liability. So here in red font we have marked their exact nature. So term loans they are a long term liability reserves they are part of net worth, bank overdraft they are current liability, provisions of various types they are current liability, debentures long term liabilities, capital part of net worth, creditors or sundry creditors or trade creditors current liability, expenses payable or outstanding expenses current liability, loan from friends relatives long term liability, advance from customers current liability. On asset side prepaid expenses current asset, land and building fixed assets, investment in shares non current assets, goodwill intangible asset, debtors current assets as well as quick asset, plant machinery fixed asset, preliminary expenses, intangible assets, cash in hand, current asset as well as quick asset, stocks, current asset, advances to suppliers, current asset as well as quick asset. Now based on this classification we will prepare a summary of balance sheet assets liabilities. So here we have that summary, capital and reserves that is net worth it is 400. So sum total of item number 2 and 7. So number 2 and number 6 sorry not 7 number 6. So 2 plus 6 capital plus reserves it is 400. Long term liabilities 1 plus 5 plus 9 so 1 plus 5 plus 9 so it gives us 600 then current liabilities 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10 so it is current liabilities total 
So total liabilities will remain same. Similarly, we summarize the assets. Fixed assets, item number 12 and item number 16. So total is 440. Non-current asset, only one item, that is number 13. Intangible assets, item number 14 and 17. So 14 is goodwill, 17 is preliminary expenses. Current assets, 11, that is prepaid expenses. 15, that is debtors. 18, that is cash in hand. 19, that is stock and 20 that is advanced to suppliers. Out of this, 15, 18 and 20, they are quick assets also. So the total of quick assets is 390 and it is part of this 980 which is total of current assets. So here we have summarized the balance sheet. Now we shall make use of this information for calculation of ratios. Let us now start the calculation of ratios. So it is same information which we had summarized on the previous slide. Let us now start calculation of ratios. First of all, current ratio. Current ratio is equal to current asset divided by current liabilities. This is the formula. We place the information in this formula. 980 is the amount of current assets. 520 is the amount of current liabilities. So we make the calculation. The ratio is 1.88 is to 1. So the benchmark ratio is 1.33 is to 1. And here the current ratio is 1.88 is to 1. This shows high liquidity position. Now quick ratio. So quick assets divided by current liability. So this ratio is also known as asset test ratio. So 390 is amount of quick assets. 520 is amount of current liability. We make the calculation and it is 0.75 is to 1. And there is no benchmark for this ratio. Third one is debt equity ratio. So it is part of leverage ratio. This, these two ratios are part of liquidity ratios. And this is part of leverage ratio. So debt equity ratio is calculated as long term liability divided by tangible net worth. So long term liability is 600, tangible net worth is 350. So how do we calculate? So net worth minus intangible asset. That gives us tangible net worth. So this is 350. So 600 by 350, the ratio is 1.71 is to 1. The benchmark ratio is 2 is to 1. So this also is within that benchmark level. So we can also say it's healthy ratio. Not total outside liability ratios. So this also is part of leverage ratios. To calculate, this is the formula. Long term liability plus current liability divided by tangible net worth. So here we have long term liability. Here we have current liability divided by tangible net worth. So the ratio is 3.2 is to 1. There is no benchmark for this ratio. Let us now go to next ratio. Stock turnover ratio. So this ratio is calculated as sales by amount of stocks. So sales are 2500 and stocks are 560. In the previous slide, we are given the amount of stocks. So 560 is the amount of stocks. So the ratio is 4.5 times. 
so there are 4 and 4.5 rotations in one year of the stock to be equal to sales so this also is known as inventory turnover ratio now debtors turnover ratio so this ratio is calculated as sales by debtors sales we are given 2500 debtors in the previous slide we are given 320 so we calculated the ratio it is a 7.8 times so higher the turnover ratio better it is so debtors turnover ratio has another form which is called debtors collection period or debtors velocity ratio so that we are going to do in this slide so debtors velocity or debtors collection period so here the ratio is calculated as debtors divided by sales into period since we have to calculate the ratio in months we multiply it by 12 if a calculation is to be made in days then we will multiply it by 365 so 320 is level of debtors 2500 is level of sales into 12 so the ratio is 1.54 months this indicates that the credit sales made by this firm on average basis are recovered in 1.54 months that is roughly within two months and there is no benchmark for that now net profit to sales margin so ratio is calculated as net profit by sales in 200 so 250 is level of net profit 2500 is level of sales so 10 percent is the net profit to sales margin return on equity so this is also called equity net worth is also known as equity so net profit divided by tangible net worth into 100 so return on equity or return on net worth 250 is amount of net profit 350 is amount of net tangible net worth so the ratio is 71 percent so the return which this business is getting on the funds invested by it in the business is a 71 percent very high return then return on investment to calculate return on investment in addition to tangible net worth we also add amount of long-term liabilities so amount of tangible net worth plus amount of long-term liabilities this is called investment or capital employed return on investment is also known as return on capital employed so here we have the net profit divided by tangible net worth plus long-term liabilities so 250 is amount of profit 350 amount of tangible net worth 600 amount of long-term liability so the return is 26 percent and for these ratios also there is no benchmark now debt service coverage ratio this ratio is calculated for taking a decision on a term loan proposal and also to calculate amount of term loan installment this is the formula so numerator net profit plus depreciation plus term loan interest and a denominator term loan installment plus term loan interest so net profit is after tax so we have net profit after tax 250 then 30 is amount of depreciation we are given term loan interest we are given 30 term loan interest we are given 30 term loan installment we are given 70 
So 250 plus 30 plus 30, 310 divided by 100. So the ratio is 3.1. The benchmark level is 2. So this way we can make calculation of financial ratios. So whenever huge information is given, large information is given, it is better to classify the asset liabilities then convert that classification into summary so that we can make use of the summary information for calculation of the ratios. Well friends, I am sure the contents of this video will benefit you. Thank you for watching the video.